game has just started here in Philadelphia. An opening uh -oh. basket by Watson. And for those of you who just join us, Mike Dunleavy was just knocked to the floor on a drive to the basket. And some uh, anxious moments for Duke as he is escorted to the Duke bench. It, look at how he's holding his shoulder. I thought he got hit in the chin, but he's walking in a very peculiar fashion. It's like you his see shoulder. His, his dad is sitting right up behind him. It looks like it's a shoulder. No foul called on him. Oh, I guess they called a non-shooting foul. Called a foul on Watson. And there's on the back Gad Zurich. Earlier tonight in Philadelphia, the USC Trojans held on to beat Kentucky. What a performance by SC, leading by as many as 21 early in the second half. Twice they saw their lead trim to one. Battier over the backboard, Bruin ball. Duke 0 for 2 from 3. This is a critical part of the game for them. 40% of their offense comes from the three-point line. And so far, they've missed two. Duhon has come into the lineup. He takes that pressure off Jason Williams, really guarding the point guard. Good pass. Duke read it. Back door, and they steal it away. Corner, Nate James blocked by Watson. Watson, a terrific competitor. Here's how Dunleavy was injured. You see him get hit on the chin right here. Hit him right on the side of the head. But when he went down, it was his shoulder that seemed to bother him more than his chin. Duke without a long bench, now even shorter. Nice switching by Gutzurek, who is extremely quick for a man his size. Fastest man on the team. James over oh. three. Over oh, three now from three. Gad Zurich pulls it down with two hands. Up ahead. Tough pass got there. Knight rejected. Here is where Williams is so tough in the open court. You've got to stop his dribble early. Back out, Battier, second time from this spot. Missed them both. And this time, Watson has it knocked out. Got a little hit to his face. Uh, no call. What happened there? Williams went after Watson as a payback for the yeah, Dunleavy. I think That's you're right. That's exactly what that was all about. And yeah, Watson knew it, too. He looked back at him. Now, Watson's Scornful not going to back down. Neither will either of these competitors. Duke is 0 for 5, all threes. Barnes too strong, and Casey Sanders goes high for that rebound. For UCLA, you jump. You want to jump out and start making some of these shots, particularly with Dunleavy out of there. Boos are going to come into the game, Jim. Williams misfiring. Rebound. Capono. Duke 0 for 6. All behind the arc. Up ahead. Tough pass. Get Zurich. Can't lay it in. Get Zurich, as I said, tremendous speed. Williams, Gab Zirk, there's that speed again. He got back down the floor. Jim, he's six foot ten or eleven. He here's only here comes Boozer into the game. Sanders out. But he only has size 13 shoot. Boozer. And he is extremely quick for a man his size. You're gonna say Boozer back on the floor for the first time since February the 27th. The Maryland game. He missed Duke's last six. That was a game that Duke lost, the last game that they've lost, as a matter of fact, this year. Boozer down a low post with Gutzurek. Williams at last. Duke hits from the outside. Their first points took almost two and a half minutes. You know, watching Boozer run in practice yesterday, it didn't look like he was having any problem at all. Now, you got to figure he doesn't have the stamina he had, but he was certainly not gimpy at all. Barnes leans in. James with a big rebound. And a reach in called on Knight. UCLA's had some uh, close range looks. Not getting him the drop. Luke Krzyzewski, he picked up his 600th all-time win. That's Ed Army and Duke in the ACC championship blowout victory over North Carolina. Well, if you're the coach at Duke, there's no time you'd rather have a win than against Carolina for your 600. Got Zurich with the block. That was like Rude Olsen got his against Stanford in a win. Yeah, couldn't pick a better opponent yeah, exactly. to do it against, right? Boy, James everywhere. Barnes and Boozer comes in and just swipes it away. Boy, there's a mental toughness on this Duke team. Mike Krzyzewski all year long got his guys to play a lot of minutes. And it'd be physically tough. Inside, Boozer is back. He makes a steal at one end, scores at the other. This really helps Duke in this regard. Zurich cannot afford now to kind of play a one-man zone in there because Boozer will be able to score, unlike Sanders. 
Knight. And that one rolls off the rim. Loser with another rebound. Let's see how long he can go up and down the court, Jim. Danny A. Tough shot. And Barnes clears for the Bruins. The pace of this game, UCLA wants to play this pace, as does Duke. So we heard at the top of the show Steve Lavin talking about the half-court sets. But it looks like his team wants to push it. Great shooter in Capono. Capono too tall for Barnes. And we have the under-16 timeout. Duke was cold early, but now five unanswered for the first edge on the first break. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Volvo, Mountain Dew, EMC, and by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Jim, Mike Dunleavy is back on the sidelines. He's moving his arm back and forth, but it looks like he's all right. I think he was really stunned. And uh, it looks like he's going to be able to come back in his game. Inside Capono on the back of Boozer. Let's go over to Bonnie. Well, Jim, Dunleavy's still shoulder hurting a bit. He suffered a pinched nerve between his neck and his right shoulder. They put some icy hot on it. Trainers massaged him a little bit, so uh, he should be back in. Thank you. Adie looking for his first shot of the night. That's 0 for 4 for Shane. And Boozer doing a nice job with his presence inside, changing the complexion of that Duke defense. Capono not able to get on the switches. He's got to get on a smaller man on the switch to get his jump shot off. He's got Williams with him now. Bruins have not scored the last eight trips. There's that 1-4 set that Zurich's sitting down inside. Knight in the middle, and a reach in. Boozer forced it. Nice decision by James not to go long. Watson did a good job getting back. Battier. He's not shy, is he? First basket to drop for the night. You know, Duke has played on this arena before. They played Temple here this year. Beat them 93-68 in that game. They were 17 for 30 of three. Red hot from three Right, that so night. it's not like they're not used to it. It's the second time they played Temple in just a two-week stretch. They played them in the NIT final. Two-point win and then blew him out here in Philly. Capono loses control. That was Battier again with those quick hands inside. Capono from three. Tipped out, kept alive by the Bruins. Knight. UCLA getting out of their offense completely here. Earl Watson's going to have to call for the ball to get it back and to set up in their 1-4. That's 10 straight trips without scoring. James, and it's going against James. Get an interactive tournament experience with fan polls, in-game features, audio clips, and video highlights, all at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com. Dunleavy is back on the floor. And he looked okay sitting back over there. He just took a shot, and I think it just staggered him a little bit. Kind of like a boxer who gets that delayed reaction to the punch. Nice move. Oh, and Watson lost the handle. Ray Young is in for the Bruins. Williams finds James for the lay-in. That's a 10-point Duke run. Capono shakes off James. And that's Duke ball. That's two good looks for Capono so far in his jumper. The guy is a great shooter, the best percentage shooter from three ever at UCLA, and there's a nice pass to James. The ball is stuck on top of the goal, on top of the backboard. We need uh, uh, Jeff Trapani of to come back. Uh, USC back out here. <laughs> and look at <laughs> Battier, the academician that he is, says, hell, let me just have the broom and I'll do a little bit of everything. We'll give him a, we'll give him a rebound in the stats for that? Well, there's not many awards that young man hasn't had, so we'll give him the sweeper of the year in addition, huh? Yeah. That pass, Jason Williams got up in the air. Pull up three, Capono. He's cold early. Duhan up high for the rebound. With these long rebounds, Duke is soon going to be able to start getting on the run. Ball stripped away by Barnes, but right back comes Battier and a whistle. Very smart play by Battier. Realized he didn't have a good look or a good shot, but he drew the foul on it. There he is. 
Jane Battier, as cool a kid that's ever played college basketball. Capono has collected now a second foul. Just six minutes, 41 seconds into the game. Battier at the line for two. Tenth player in Duke history to have his jersey retired. MVP of the uh, ACC tournament. There we see the two on the same team. And as I said, we've got to go back to UCLA with Bill Walton and Keith Wilkes before we had one. And Henry Bibby. Henry Bibby and Walton were first team All-Americans on the same team. A 12-0 run for the Blue Devil. You see Duke is not playing Barnes at all. He's they're letting him handle the ball outside, taking the shot, which he doesn't want. Ray Young has come in off the bench, and he delivers. That was the first make after 10 misses in a row by the Bruins. Seven minutes and 40 seconds without scoring before that hit by Young. Jim Young, a very unusual player. He can get hot or he can get very cold. We had in the North Carolina game, did not score a point in that game. Here's that high screen and roll that Duke loves to use for Jason Williams. He's got a big man on him. Williams over Gadzurik, and Bruins want to run with this. Gadzurik down the floor. Here's Young. Lob Gadzurik. That's what Watson did last year against Maryland in the tournament. Well, there was a case where Sanders went over to cover a man that's not going to take an outside shot in Young and put himself out of position to be where he was supposed to be to stop the lob. Those lobs led to 16 assists when they blew out the Terrapins last year. No turnovers, there was some line that Watson had. Battier, this firing on the three, Gatzurk may have got away with one. He sure did. Push Sanders right out of the way. Sanders is now a guy that's going to the weight room four days a week. They figure he can't mess up his shot anyway, and it is helping to bulk him up some. It's Wojo, Steve Wojciechowski, the assistant, who's taking him in there as opposed to the two days a week they had earlier. Now four days, and he can tell he's certainly developing. There's Sanders with his great speed. He and Gadzurek could be two of the fastest big men in college basketball. Gadzurek, that was wild. Dunleavy holds on to it. Duke is going to have to get Jason Williams started. Capano, good steal. Two turnovers by Williams so far. Barnes, and this time Dunleavy reaches in. That was a pretty good block on his part. Barnes has got great speed. Dunleavy caught him. Look at Dunleavy here. Six foot eight or nine. Long arms himself, nice clean play. Went after the ball. This is a kid who's just a sophomore, talking about Dunleavy, and now Barnes goes to the line. He had a big game. Uh, we saw it, Billy, on CBS. Stanford at Pauley Pavilion, 32 points. It was the most by a Bruin in a game since Chris Johnson back in 98 had 33. Boozer is back, so uh, he's working his way into the rotation here rather quickly. James also. And I go back to that North Carolina game where UCLA was down 18, came out in the second half with full court pressure. He had 18 points and 10 rebounds in that one, and I really think more than anybody on this team, Barnes is a guy that makes him go in that press. So we go to another break, and UCLA has scored the last six doubles by four. Looking at some of the early numbers, Duke has already fired up 10 more threes. Wow, neither team doing much from a field goal standpoint. Full court pressure. Dunleavy hanging back, snaps it to the middle. Battier easily broken. Textbook, James inside, he traveled. For those of you expecting to see the Cincinnati-Stanford game out west, that tip time is coming up here just a few minutes away. We'll get you there for the start. Tim with Cummings in, get Zurich out, just giving him a little bit of a blow. Jason Williams sitting down early. But again, look at Battier not playing Barnes at all, kind of playing a one-man zone down inside, letting Barnes be the handler. There's a the lob. And the lob this time. Yeah, we mentioned how he didn't have a single turnover in the tournament game last year oh, against Maryland. Maryland. Yep. Lob after lob. Where's well, it? the difference there is that Battier is a guy that understands the game a little bit, so he wasn't at all moved aside when Barnes faked up and went back. Good rotation defensively by UCLA right now. Nice 
Nice matchups by UCLA. Tough defense. Try to trap Batty. He stepped on the line. They forced it. Watson and Barnes. Great half court defensive play by UCLA. This is a team that in John Wooden's first national championship, 64. First the team opponent, they beat in the championship. That's right. The opponent, Duke University. The great run that they had, 16-0 run to win that one, 98-83. Billy Knight, three. And Battier out battles the freshman T.J. Cummings for the rebound. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Clark Kellogg and I will keep tabs on UCLA and Duke for you, but right now it's time for the second game of the night in the West in Anaheim. Cincinnati and Stanford about to do battle for the right to move on and play Maryland on Saturday. Let's take you there live and join Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. All right, Greg, Stanford, the top seed in the West against the fifth seeded Cincinnati Bearcats out of Conference USA. And the bracket here in the West Regional Maryland advancing as they took care of Georgetown and they will take on the winner of this one. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner welcome to Anaheim. When you look at this Stanford team they're seated number one and they have one of the best pure shooters in the country in Casey Jacobson. Casey Jacobson the 6'6 sophomore really epitomizes this Stanford team. This young man shoots over 50% from the field, almost 50% from the three-point line. Stanford's a team that doesn't beat itself. As for the Cincinnati Bearcats, Dan, they have a two-headed monster at guard. It's funny for a Bob Huggins team to be really led by the backcourt, a perimeter-oriented Cincinnati team. And in Satterfield and Logan, they are a backcourt that's very quick. They rebound the ball very well. They can put points up on the board. They're going to be a problem for Stanford this evening. So Bob Huggins. In his 12th year as the head coach at Cincinnati, and he's done everything. Three Elite Eights, and he led his team to the Final Four back in the 91-92 season. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. On the left at Cincinnati, Davis, McElroy, B.J. Grove with Satterfield and Logan. Their two top guns in the backcourt. For Stanford on the right, Collins, Mendez, and his twin buck brother, Jason Collins, in the front court with Michael McDonald. No, he's not a Doobie brother. He's a Cardinal member and Casey Jacobson and Mike Montgomery one of the best coaches in the nation in his 15th year and he's trying to lead Stanford to his second final four it's a Stanford team that's very deep very athletic and the officials Tony Green Mike Stewart and Lonnie Dixon Cincinnati and Stanford meeting for the third time and their first meeting back a long ways back in 68-69 with Cincinnati winning 60-49. They met the following year and the Bearcats took care of them in Cincinnati 80-46. Guess it'll be interesting to see how this game develops. Cincinnati very strong in the backcourt. They don't rely an awful lot on their big guys to score, but Stanford, even though they shoot the ball very well, they have pretty good depth. Once you get one of the Collins twins in foul trouble, Stanford suddenly gets very much smaller. It'll be interesting to see if Cincinnati can attack Stanford on the inside, get either Jason or Jaron Collins in foul trouble, and then the size matchup becomes a little bit more manageable for the Bearcats. And Stanford advancing to the round of 16 by knocking off St. Joe's in the second round, 90-83. They defeated UNC Greensboro, 89-60 in the first round. Cincinnati, they come onto the floor and they beat BYU in the first round and Kent State in the second. As you take a look at the road to the Sweet 16. So here's the toss in the tap band. It's controlled by the Cardinal. Michael McDonald, senior from Long Beach, California, is the point guard. Here's Casey Jacobson around the corner, inside, stolen. And here comes Cincinnati, Satterfield, the runner. Short, loose ball. And Stanford comes up with the rebound. I don't think Cincinnati would mind playing an up-tempo game if they can get some easy baskets. Donald guarded by Logan, Mendez by Satterfield. Man to man defense for Cincinnati, and they will get after you. Inside, knocked away. Cardinal turn it over. Satterfield, the young man from the Bronx, to Logan. He's their top scorer. To the basket with the step to lean in. And Collins with the board. 
That's Jaron Collins. Stanford is a team that likes to push it as well. Stanford scores a lot of points. Almost 84 a game. Now Jacobson, hard to the basket, stops, draws contact. Emmanuel McElroy with the foul. The Cincinnati Bearcats, they play in Conference USA, received an at-large bid. Their 20th tournament appearance. And Bob Huggins, the leader of one of the most storied college basketball programs in the country. And Bob Huggins has told me, told us yesterday that this has been one of his most difficult years. A lot of young people, he lost some key guys, four players who were really significant contributors last year. Everybody expected this to be a rebuilding year, and after some struggles early, they've won 13 of their last 16. Second free throw good for Jacobson. First team, AP All-America, as Stanford takes the early lead. Man-to-man -man defense for Stanford. And look for Logan and Satterfield to try to beat their guys out on the perimeter. B.J. Grove, the drop step in traffic, tapped around Mendez with the rebound. Grove very aggressive inside early. And a whistle and foul. Jamal Davis fouling Collins. Cincinnati's had some second round troubles in the past. They've had it in the past, but they got by this year. And the interesting thing that we were just talking about last year, the, the terrible injury to Kenyon Martin in the Conference USA tournament. Mendez off the inbounds play, knocks down the 13-foot jump shot, and the Cardinal take a three to nothing lead. The interesting thing about Cincinnati, they get past the second round with a team this year that is nowhere near as good as the team they had last year. Satterfield picks up his dribble. Davis, now Satterfield hard across the lane, pulling up in traffic, loose ball, rebounded by Jamal Davis, but he steps on the baseline. Gus, people talk about how you can beat Stanford with quickness, but McDonald and Jacobson and Mendez, they're pretty quick out there as well. And McDonald showed you some quickness, really doing a great job moving his feet, staying in front of Satterfield. And I think that's important for the Stanford defense. They don't want to allow that penetration. Stanford 30 and two this season, finished 16 and two in the Pac-10. And Collins knocks it down from up top, Jaron Collins. And Bob Huggins wants a timeout. Cincinnati over five from the field. Coach Steve. Affectionately known as Huggy Bear. Nothing warm and fuzzy about this conversation with B.J. Grove. Well, this year has really been a challenge for Bob Huggins. Sometimes he cajoles, sometimes he shouts, sometimes he soothes. And there's his problem right there. Cincinnati 0 for 5. And Bob Hub Huggins is aware that you're not going to beat Stanford 60 to 59. <laughs> you have to score some points. Interestingly, we talked about Cincinnati playing real well, Gus. They have averaged 75 points a game over their last 16, where they're 13 and 3. Stanford has only scored fewer than 75 points only six times this year. McElroy to the basket on the spin, and he travels. The Stanford Cardinal and their team profile, 6,556 students, and they received the automatic bid by winning the back 10 Inside, Collins, great catch goes up, blocked from behind by Donald Little. Now Satterfield, cross court, and the Bearcats turn it over. Lead pass, Collins leans in and rolls it home. Collins can really run the court very effectively. Unfortunately for Cincinnati that last time, Jamal Davis thought the pass was to him, and he missed it. Cincinnati a little tight to start this one. Davis inside, off the mark. Jaron Collins with the rebound. Bearcats 0 for 6 from the field. Now Collins poked away, gets it back. Boy, what a great job to keep this pivot for Cincinnati. Very aggressive on the defensive end early in the game. Collins to his brother, Jaron, to fade away, in and out, tapped around, and picked up by Jamal Davis. Cincinnati looking for their first bucket of the game to maybe calm things down a bit. Always helps when the ball goes in the basket. Cincinnati 
Playing pretty, it's pretty good intensity on the defensive end. Logan would be the man to do it. Nice look inside the easy jam by Donald Little. Well, one of the things that can really be a problem against Cincinnati is Satterfield and Logan, if you let them get the ball in the middle, they can rise up and shoot it or they can draw the defense and pass off. You really want to force them to the sidelines in baseball. Well, McDonald's very good with the basketball, rarely turns it over. Mendez, backdoor, Jacobson, offensive foul. And Jacobson picks up his first. 15.40 to go here in the first half of play. Stanford on top of Cincinnati, 7-2. Job by Gazurik. Just a little touch at the end, but a good job offensively on the pass. Yeah, talk deja deja vu. They had that run. Greensboro, Philadelphia, yep. Minneapolis. It's incredible. But there won't be, if they get past this game, a Kentucky waiting for them in the regional final at 92. Eliminated tonight by USC. 80-76 winners over the Wildcats. Uh, I think that the ball, Jason Williams saying the ball is too slippery, asked the official just to stop action for a second. No timeout will be called here. It is amazing to think that it is the same exact travel yep. schedule, same routing, same road to the Final Four, maybe the championship is that last championship by the Devils of Greensboro, the first two rounds, the regional in Philly, Final Four, Minneapolis. James steps back. That's his way off the mark. He was not ready to shoot that ball because Capono rushed right at him and it slipped out of his hands. Duke trying to make plays that aren't there right now, making this game much more difficult than it needs to be. UCLA running their offense, they just can't get the shots. UCLA is only 5 of 22 from the field. And Gadzura, basket interference. They'll take it away. And that ball would have been in. Capono is such a great shooter and has such a soft touch. You've got to give it a chance if you're his teammate. Watch how this ball will die in the rim. He is a great shooter, no question about the goaltender. That one might have been outside, though. I don't know. You think that would have dropped, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. And if not, he's such a soft shooter. Go up and get a two-handed rebound. Williams with a player in his face. Barnes, guys, for that rebound. Under four and a half to play first half. Nice hesitation by Barnes. He gets fouled. Just dreadful shooting here. Barnes uh, took a little hit, came down on the Duke player. That's the second on Boozer. Tuesday on CBS, a barroom murder investigation turns into a deadly trap. Don't miss an hour of surprising twists and turns on an all-new Jag Tuesday right here on CBS. So Barnes to the line for a pair. Again, that's the second on Boozer. There's a player at the line, Billy, that was so disenchanted with his playing time that he contemplated uh, foregoing basketball at one point and trying out for the football team as a wide receiver. He's a record-setting tight end at Citrus Heights Del Campo High School. Well, lucky for Steve Lavin, that wasn't his decision because he has really been the program turner here yeah. along with Earl Watson. That was a year ago, and he's had a good season, averaging 12.7 rebounds a game. You notice how UCLA has not given Duke any opportunity to get off the quick starts or any fast break opportunities. Nothing there. Duhan, was that a pass no. all the way? No, that was a shot that came up short. But Thumbly is a very good offensive rebounder. So far wide of the basket, you, you almost could buy into it. Young. Not a good outside shooter. Backing up when he shot that one, fading. Williams open on the side. And a push, Capono. It's going to be his third, Capono's third. Jim, what happened in that open court? Duhon did a great job because here's that pass we see. He got fouled on the shot, and no question it was a shot. No foul call, but it made a perfect lob pass to Dunleavy. Capono's going to have to sit down, and that really hurts UCLA. He's having a hard enough time shooting from the outside. First team all-conference player. That still looked like a good pass. <laughs> well, the, the foul created yeah. the pass. Duhan, one more. 
It is hard to believe that in this pace of a game, UCLA would be sitting there with 15 points. Well, I really like the way this young man has fit into his team this year as a freshman with great promise. Probably the top guard coming out of high school last year as far as all-around ability is concerned. Going to school that already had a point guard like Jason Williams and fitting in nicely. His assist to turnover ratio, Duhon we're talking about at the other end. Sensational. Three to one. Barnes is going to have to make himself more difficult to guard because Battier's playing a one-man zone. Now that is unstoppable. That really is. And Zurich with the hook. Loser, no threat there. Williams. Cut off, goes corner. Dunleavy three. Rattles out. And the Bruins fight for it. Barnes eventually backs off his teammate. That's the Duke offense. Penetrate and kick out. Dunleavy would normally hit that shot. Knight, a good shooter, hasn't been looking to take his shot. Barnes squeezes it back out. Young, you can't get any more open than that. But, but there's what Duke wants. They want the wrong guy taking the outside shot. This is maybe the right guy. No, Watts in front of the rim. Williams tough to stop here. Oh. Watson followed up by Battier. That's exactly the way Duke likes to play. You get Williams out in the open court, everybody else running. That's, that's their game. I thought Watson had defended it off of Williams, but there was Battier. But Watson went for the spectacular block. Watson, and that's a block. Battier, who is going to follow this play, Williams comes down. Now, what Watson had to do is to go ahead and just play solid. He doesn't play solid, allows Battier to come down and follow it up. There was a man on Williams. You see how Watson came over, Jim, to try to make this spectacular block. He has to be there to block out the trailing player for Duke. Watson at the line for two. Jim, how about the way that this young man, during the trying times for UCLA, when there was all the talk about Rick Pitino behind the scenes at, at UCLA, and Watson not only stood up for his coach, but for the program in general, showed great character there, even attacked the administration for a time. Going to be a classy kid. Yeah, no question. We had a nice visit with him out of Pauley a couple of weeks back for the Stanford game, and how he has developed his personality, his leadership, been a great college player four years at UCLA. We'll be right back. 13 24 to go in the first half of play. 10 8. Stanford. Cardinal seated number one. The Bearcats number five. This one off the side of the rim to Satterfield. And Mendez with the rebound. Now McDonald in the front court. Inside, Dale Johnson leads it. Nice play, Jason Collins. Well, you would expect a football quarterback to be able to make nice passes, but that's probably a shorter one than he usually throws. Stanford in the man-to-man. -man. McElroy down the lane again on the spin. This time he doesn't travel. Antoine, rather, Emmanuel McElroy known as the defensive stopper on the team. Nice basket there. Stanford with a two-point lead. Boy, Cincinnati really aggressive in the man-to-man. -man. Inside, Johnson. Boy, Teo Johnson at six feet seven, about 245 pounds. He is very active and very aggressive on the inside. He's come off the bench as an assist in a basket, and he's only been out there about a minute. Antoine Jones, Satterfield, forcing his way down the baseline. Now Little turns. The bank won't go. Dale Johnson with the rebound. Gus, as you watch the Collins twins, each of them, as they play defense, they really don't go for a lot of blocked shots. They get their hands up, maintain their position, block out the guy who's shooting the ball. Mendez, tough pass. And a whistle and foul. This one going against Antoine Jones. Teo Johnson, he can throw touchdowns and lay it up as well. 14-10 Stanford. 
we will say goodbye to uh, a senior that we've enjoyed watching and following for four years tonight. Will it be Shane Battier of Duke or Earl Watson of UCLA? One of them will see their college career in tonight here in Philadelphia. Well, Jim, I think both of these coaches and teams would say we played the first half to get to the second because I don't think we've seen the best of either club so far in this game. Dunleavy, real open look. Boy, they're getting the... Good and job Sanders. by Sanders. And no basket. Before the shot, Cummings fell on him. Coming up singular at the half with Greg and Clark. Update on all the tournament news from tonight. And a look in at Cincinnati Stanford coming up on singular at the half. That'll send Sanders to the line. Jim, uh, back in 1988, and we think about all these coaching changes that are taking place and all the headlines about big shifts. Back in 88 at the Final Four, UCLA looking for a coach really pursued Mike Krzyzewski. Mike turned him down, then it was Jimmy Valvano. Remember that? Yep. Remember that? He left the Final Kansas Four City, and went yep. out there to in Kansas City the year that Kansas won it. Valvano went out there and Pete Dallas and crew decided not on Valvano and it kept going down until Jim Herrick finally became the guy that became the coach. Eric brought in Lavin as an assistant. Mm. Lavin now in his completing his fifth full season. Pono back out on the court right now. Dangerous thing with those fouls. Gadzera oh. too strong. Knight keeps it alive. Oh. Slashing and drawing the foul. Good offensive rebounding by Gadzera to keep things alive. Knight in there, a smaller man out rebounded Sanders and Battier. So Sanders. Commits his second. And Knight gave this team a big boost when he moved into the starting lineup around the 1st of February. 11 and 2 as a starter. You know, he actually started, Jim, at the beginning of the year. He was a starter the first game of the year. The first 10 games in almost a starting type role, he averaged 3.3 points a game. When he finally became a starter at the end of the season, he boosted himself up to a 12 point per game score. Had a stretch of four Saturdays in a row in Pac-10 play, where he averaged about 20 a game. He was 22 at Stanford yeah. in that huge win. Really the man. So he hits one of two. 130 to go in the half, and Duke leads by seven. Again, penetration and kickouts. That's the story of Duke's offense. Nice man-to-man -man here by UCLA. Good aggressive defense. On the shot clock. Battier. Oh, Banks at home. Tough shot. What a shot. 12 for Battier. He had two UCLA men on him and the clock working against him. Capono on the floor this last minute with three fouls. Yeah, I, I wonder about that one. Gad Zurich. Too strong oh, again. And Cummings pushed off. I saw his dad here earlier tonight, Terry Cummings, who had some great games against UCLA and in his lifetime as a college player at DePaul. And that's the third on Cummings. Again, we have Barnes over in the sideline, and I'm really surprised with 51 seconds if you take a chance with Capono out there picking up a cheap fourth foul. Two shots for Battier. We mentioned all of the awards. He's already won by six different sources, National Player of the Year. And uh, even better, as you look at some of his career numbers, he's most proud of that last one, charges taken. Even better, again, first team Verizon Academic All-America for the second year in a row. Duke has its largest lead. It's 11 with 50 seconds to play in the half. Back screen by Watson doesn't work for Barnes. A lot of good talking out there by the Duke defensive players. Knight three-pointer, big one. Cut it back down to eight. Looking for Williams to drive the ball at the court. Nice long pass. Dunleavy to Sanders. Misses the dunk. Capone. Oh, beautiful there. pass. Watch out. There's the fourth. There it is, Jim. Now, is it worth having a man on the floor to get a shot as opposed to picking up the fourth foul? I don't think so. And who would have expected him to get caught in this kind of situation? But I don't think he could take that chance. Just got absolutely exposed. No one else down there for the Bruins. And Capono reaches in. He will be replaced by Ray Young after the first free throw. 
Jim Capono in the first uh, game against Hofstra, only two for eight at seven points, three rebounds. But he's going to sit down now. I think that was a calculated mistake on the part of Coach Lavin to have him on the floor. A miscalculation. Miscalculation. The leading scorer for the Bruins, first team all Pac-10. Picks up a fourth foul in the final second of the half. First. It's extremely important that McDonald stay out of foul trouble. Logan. And McDonald went out of the game against St. Joe's. First time he's really been in foul trouble all year. St. Joe's. Logan, a crossover game. down the lane. It's short. Loose ball. McDonald with it. Stanford on the three on two. Jacobson can't handle the pass out of bounds. Gus McDonald operating very effectively in the middle. And we were talking about him when he went out of the game against St. Joe's. That's when, with four fouls, that's when St. Joe's made their big run. McDonald really anchors that defense and the offense from his point guard spot. He's an extremely important player, and Cincinnati's going to be attacking him all night long. Cincinnati 0 for their first six, but then they hit five for their next eight. They got some easier shots. Logan calling for the ball. Eight to shoot, takes it from way downtown, and comes up a little short. Jaron Collins with the rebound is four. Now Collins, he can stroke it from out there, in and out Satterfield with the board. His third, here comes Kenny. Just got a little bit ahead of himself right there, guys trying to make a move, almost lost the ball. One of those lightning quick New York City point guards. And look at the rebounding, Stanford up 12-7. Now Little in the low post. Blocked by Collins and out of bounds. Jaron Collins saying, not right here. Now watch the way Jaron Collins blocks this shot, Gus. He hardly leaves his feet. He may, he may have gone up, what, one inch on that? But he does a great job maintaining his position. So if the guy gets the shot off, he's blocked him out. And now being seven foot really helps. Get Certainly him. does. court with like Battier and Williams. Here's what Duke likes to do, a solid screen. If the defense goes behind, Williams takes the jumper. If the defense decides to follow, he goes to the basket. If the defense tries to switch, Battier rolls to the basket on a typical pick and roll. But tonight, UCLA has defended that play extremely well. Where do you see that kind of two-man game? Remind you of anything? Well, you know, there's a guy by the name of John Stockton that's not bad at doing that with a fellow with, a, I think his name's Malone, huh? They've made it into a history science course. Oh, Sanders gets the roll. You're talking an awful lot about the NBA these days, hey, James, you know? I mean, James. you're out there promoting that league. Watson in the final 18 seconds of the half. That was a setup you gave him. <laughs> uh, try to be an assist, man. Stockton Light. Sanders back in there on Barnes. You can see whoever has Barnes, and here's a nice step out. Watson, five seconds in the half. He Knight. likes his shot. Good look. Got it. And again, Knight with a couple of big threes in the final minute and a half. Duke calculated gamble to go ahead and switch out, double up Watson. He was able to find the best shooter they had on the floor. This was a... Uh, I think a very bad move by Duke to try to go ahead and double up and leave Knight wide alone because he is the best shooter that UCLA has with Capono now out of the game. Let's go over to Bonnie. All right, Johnny Dawkins, Duke's biggest lead of the game, but where could you stand to improve in the second half? Well, we have to do a better job of finding their shooters in the second half and, and limiting them to one shot. Uh, we're doing a pretty good job offensively. Some of our looks hadn't fallen, but we'll continue to take those shots. But defensively, we have to make sure we limit them to one shot under pressure. Thanks, Johnny. 33-26 at halftime. We'll continue on the road to the Final Four with Greg and Clark in a moment. Boy, McElroy's just all over Jake. Mendez wheeling, strip, saved from going out of bounds by Antoine Jones. Seventh turnover of the game for Stanford. Logan, no call. Jacobson with the rebound. Jacobson lobs it inside, and Joe Bikini with the layup. Boy, nice job by Jacobson to take the ball to the middle of the court. 22-17, Cardinal. 
Cincinnati wants to avoid those opportunities when Stanford doesn't have to play against the set Bearcat defense. Kyle Satterfield crosses over. Jones rising fire off the heel. Loose ball. Mendez with the rebound. His third. It'll be the danger zone, I think, here for Cincinnati, Gus. Jacobson, the runner. Casey Jacobson with three points now. Stanford goes up 24 to 17. Cincinnati wants to talk things over. Good timeout called by Bob Huggins. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg for Singular at the Half at the halftime break. Duke leads UCLA by a score of 33-26. I would think the Bruins at this point would consider themselves fortunate. Other than the fact that Jason Capono has four fouls, he's their best three-point shooter. But you're right. They're only down seven. The defense has been fine. They've just got to make shots more consistent. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in Anaheim, Cincinnati and Stanford are doing battle for the right to move on to play Maryland. Right now, the Cardinal leads at 24-19, just under six minutes to play. Let's take you there live. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. 546 to go first half of play. Stanford up 24-19 on top of Cincinnati. And Joe Bikini throws the ball out of bounds. In a physical first half already. Back to Anaheim after this. CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. Let's take a look at the game summary. Cincinnati, they're getting their shots, only two less field goals. Stanford doing a nice job, though, shooting the ball. They're getting it inside. Cincinnati has played very effectively on defense, and Gus, the key for Cincinnati, if they want to pull the upset, is to stay close enough to have a chance at the end, and they're doing a pretty good job of that right now. All right, so Stanford and Cincinnati meeting for the third time as we take a look at the Cincinnati Bearcat. And Stanford, they brought a tree. <laughs> or maybe a wolf, I'm not sure. I think it's a fair cat. 24-19, Cardinal. Satterfield starts the top of the key. Looks it back out. Stokes has to pick it up. Now Logan. Down the lane. What a quick first step. To the hole with the left hand. And that's going up over two seven-footers right there. This is a guy who they say he's fixed six feet tall. I'd be surprised if he was that tall, but he's got quickness and strength, and he's not afraid. The Conference USA Player of the Year. A three-point lead for the Cardinal. Inside, here's Jason Collins, double team. Looks down low for his brother, who's fouled hard, and that will be an objective foul. If you're going to go and you're going to double team a big guy, you cannot allow him to turn because if he can turn, then he can see. And Logan just grabs him by the shirt and pulls him out of bounds. That's automatic when you, not only did he grab it once, Gus, he reached and he grabbed it twice. Watch here, he's going to grab it one time as he goes by, and then he goes and reaches his other hand. So he grabbed the shirt with both hands, and that's why they called the intentional foul. Darren Collins, a 68% free throw shooter. And now this is the first, and Stanford will get the ball back. That's right, the intentional foul. The guy who's fouled takes two shots, and then Stanford gets the ball. Collins, three of five from the line. Misses a pair. It's not like a technical foul, Gus, where anybody can shoot the shot. If it's a, an intentional foul, the man who was fouled goes to the line for the shot. Bob Huggins not happy with the way things are going right at the moment, although his team is down three. Jacobson finds Mendez, spins and travels. Ninth turnover for the Cardinal. And Stafford good at all three areas of shooting. 51% from the field, downtown 42%, and at the line, close to 75. But if you're going to turn the ball over, you don't get to the point where you can shoot it, so those statistics really aren't a factor. Inside, nice play. B.J. Grove laying it up and in. 
And his first basket of the game and a one-point Stanford lead. But Little was in the game. When he was in the game for Cincinnati, he had six points in some note. Now Grove gets two. Stan or Cincinnati continues to get production inside. Ron Little out with two fouls. Jacobson from downtown. Justin, there is no downtown for this guy. I think his range is as close to unlimited as anybody I've ever seen. He can shoot it from San Diego. Six points for Casey Jacobson. 27-23. Stanford. Now Logan. He's been really good off the dribble against Jacobson. Finds Davis. Davis almost double dribble, and he banks it in. Dustin, I think the Cincinnati inside guys are getting used to the fact that when they take it to one of the Collins twins, they're not going to try to block it. They're going to stand there and get their hands up and try to play good position defense, but they're not really intimidating the shot block. And the shooting. As McDonald can't hold on. Mike Montgomery a little hot under the collar on the Stanford sideline. So a pretty good test for the top seed in the West. Stanford by two over Cincinnati as they come up on three and a half to play in the first half. Earlier this evening, joining us on Singular at the half, we will send you back to Philadelphia for the second half of UCLA and Duke right after this. Singular at the half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. 27-25 Stanford, 3.32 to go in the first half of play. Casey Jacobson, the first team, AP All-America from Glendora, California, scored 3,284 points in high school, second all-time behind Darnell Robinson, and he broke former UCLA standout Tracy Murray's Southern California record for scoring. One reason, his father, I tell you what, he did everything that he could do to make sure that his son had... Uh, the proper facility to play <laughs> basketball. He built a basketball court in their backyard, knocking down the citrus trees. Inside Satterfield, he's from New York City. That's where they play on the playground, and he ties the game at 27. Yeah, nobody built Satterfield. They didn't have to knock that in the citrus no, trees that's to a, build him a playground. No nets on the baskets. That's why he'll go to the hole. <laughs> and the turnover situation, Stanford. 10 already, they only averaged 12.7. And a hand-checking foul called against Cincinnati, Jacobson. And there's the Stanford tree. Well, you know, they call Stanford the farm. And so I guess it's a tree farm. <laughs> and some very creative <laughs> fans in attendance. I would imagine how much his parents are paying to send him to Stanford so he can wear the pig nose on national television. That's what March Madness is all about. Jacobson gets the first to go, an 80% free throw shooter. His older brothers, Adam and Brock, both college players, both very good three-point shooters as well. Adam had 311 threes, Brock 92. Casey gets the second. 258 to go first half of play. Here's Dwayne Ballin. Gus, you know that basketball court Jacobs' father built, they called it the Taj Mahoop. He and his brothers and his friends would play sometimes until 3.30 in the morning on the court. Basketball junkie, Casey Jacobson. 29-27 Cincinnati. I wonder what the neighbors thought about that. Inside, nice play. Davis with the right hand. When I tell you what, Gus, the longer Cincinnati stays in this game, you can just see the confidence building on the part of the Bearcats. They started 0 for 6, but since then have settled down and were knotted up at 29. Kick ball. They reset the shot clock to 35. Coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg with singular at the half. Scores and highlights, plus a live look in at the Duke-UCLA game. Sub in the game, Rodney Crawford, a junior from Cincinnati. Walk on. Getting some big minutes here in the Sweet 16. And a steal. McElroy to Satterfield. Back to McElroy! Oh! The Bearcats take the lead. The first lead of the game for Cincinnati. 
Wow, the defense creating the offense, and spectacular offense it is. Al Barnes to Jacobson. And a reach in foul. Gus, people talk about defense creating offense. An excellent job by McElroy to get the ball to the middle of the court. You give it up, you get it back. And you get it back particularly when you can go up in the air like McElroy. Wow, does he get up there? Julius Barnes tries to get back. Danny Satterfield putting it in the right place. Casey Jacobson, though. At the line, very consistent, four of five. Gus, and while we talk about the Cincinnati confidence, keep in mind, too, that this is a Stanford team. They've won 15 games by 20 points or more. Don't have a lot of close games, but they have this history of NCAA tournament failure the last couple of years. And so you wonder if as the game stays tight, they'll get, or the game stays close, they'll get a little bit tight as we come down the stretch. Knocked out in the second round last year by North Carolina. Only two losses on the season for the Cardinal. Satterfield and a foul. Kenny Satterfield will go to the line. Satterfield, of course, just made that spectacular alley-oop pass. Seemed to get him excited, and now he drives to the basket again using that quickness. Certainly he wanted to make that shot. Bob Huggins turning in one of his finest coaching efforts of his career. He lost to Mark Johnson, Pete Michael, and Kenyon Martin. Struggle at times during the regular season, but managed to rally at the end of the Conference USA season to take the regular season title and has his team in the Sweet 16 with a one-point lead right now. Gus, they lost the game on January 24th at home to Louisville. And after the game, the coaching staff told us they got together and they asked themselves, do you think we're ever going to win another game? But they really put it together. The next game, they played Wake Forest, who was ranked number eight in the country at that time. Probably their biggest win of the season, an overtime victory against Wake Forest. They've won 13 of their last 16 games. They're playing with more confidence every single time out. Joe Bikini back into the game, guarded by Satterfield. Boy, Jacobson very frustrated. Collins didn't turn around. Jacobson had a back door and he was open. Stokes. Can't get him there. Jacobson knocking it down from deep. Casey Jacobson, the All-America with 13 in the first half of play. And Stanford reclaims the lead. Now Satterfield down the lane. The runner is short, but he's fouled. And when we talked to Mike Montgomery yesterday, he told us that his biggest concern was somehow trying to keep Satterfield and Logan out of the paint. And they have not really done a very effective job of that today. Mike Montgomery very concerned about the quickness that Cincinnati could bring to bear. Kenny Satterfield at the line, the tournament summary. USC advances to the Elite Eight for the first time since 54, Maryland since 75. And the Pac-10, 9-1 in the NCAA tournament, the only lost Cal going out early. Kenny Satterfield putting up nice numbers to start. Nine points, four boards. Second one good. And Logan and Satterfield off the mark very effectively early for Bob Huggins' squad. Joe Bikini has to be careful with the ball. Satterfield will look to strip it. And a whistle and foul. Crawford fouling Justin Davis. Casey Jacobson going back door. This is Jacobson right here. Now, he had come from here. They missed him. He got disgusted, but what he does is, okay, if you get your back turned to me and you can't see me out there, I'll just come take the ball from you. And he is well beyond any three-point line that would be out there. And Justin Davis missing the first free throw. Stanford only 8 of 13 from the free throw line. And he misses a pair. A good block out by Cincinnati. 50 seconds to go. Bear gets up by a point. Satterfield wants some space to break down Joe Bikini. And a hand-checking foul. Joe Bikini cannot keep up with him. 